I think I'm born into the racing world. I opened my eyes and my horse was in my world. I'm grateful to have won 19 grade ones. I'm grateful to have ridden over a thousand winners. I turned conditional in July, um, what is basically a baby professional jockey. No one's going to go, oh, yeah, geez, he won that many races. You're only as good as your last ride. I've seen the falls, I've seen the repercussions that being a jockey can have, but it's life, it's just that's what we want to do. Never done drugs, never will do drugs, but if there's ever a drug in life, it's winning. I work in the yard of Paul Nichols, who's a 10-time champion trainer, and to be under their wing, probably the best place you want to be. It's like doing your homework, mucking out. No one ever really likes to muck out. It's one of those chores, you know? It's like, it's like at home, having to hoover or do the dishwasher, you know? Uh, I'd, I'd spend most of the mornings before school riding out, and then in the evenings riding out. Homework never happened. Uh, I was always getting told off. Um, buckets. Um, but it's just horses and just general life, isn't it? Just watch and learn. I ride for Fergal O'Brien. Um, he trains in the Cotswolds. He's a young up and coming trainer and it's very local, so it's really handy for me. I appreciate a lot more just life now because there was probably times in my life where I probably didn't want to live a lot anymore. I've, I've got out of that carry on. It's Black Corton. He's the dude of the yard, aren't you, little man? Come on. They're off. They race away three miles is the trip. They have 18 fences to jump. He gave me a feel I've never had before on a horse. You know, I, I didn't even know they could go that fast, you know? We went on to Newton Abbotts, we went on to Fontwells, and it started to happen more. So for us, it's all a, it's, it's a massive whirlwind and a big current he's got me wrapped up in. I wouldn't want to come out of it for anyone. I wouldn't trade him in for anybody. The grade one is the best you can be, and uh, He's got to that height, he owes no one anything. For now, Cheltenham is in your sights, isn't it, hey? It speaks a, a lot of words, this picture. Um, obviously, it takes you back to that special day when we won the Gold Cup. OK, this is it. This is the 2010 Toe Sport Cheltenham Gold Cup. It was just... It was one of them races and days that just it was Everton, no matter what I did, it was right. No matter, Everton was just like, it was like it was a movie, it was just happening and I was just on board. Something would suddenly happen, I looked at McConnell, my IK, or star made a mistake and I thought, this is going to happen, you know. It was just like meant to be. One of them days, I had a good night's sleep the night before and I was completely relaxed and it was just like, something amazing is going to happen today. And up the hill they go, and it's Imperial Commander. It's time for a new order. He's going to come home here and win the Tote Sport Cheltenham Gold Cup. There's relief more than joy for that few seconds. Just like, I got a winner at Cheltenham, you know. And I was like, thank God for that. And then I was like, geez, I won the Gold Cup, you know. It was relief. And then I was drunk. Back in fifth was Cooldown. Bryony Frost in front on Captain Catastock. I get asked a lot of questions like, do you find it hard because you're not as strong as boys? Catastock, who's lengthened on nicely to win. Captain Catastock wins. A lot of it is technique, and yes, a lot of it is strength too. But there's, I always say, rhythm wins races. It's simple. That is it. I don't like to set goals because if I don't achieve them, I'm failing and, I, and my head can't deal with that.
So I, I've never set a goal. I've never gone, you know what, one day I'd, I'd love to win that race. Or I, I want to win those many runners. It's just, it's just not. I just take day by day. Well done, Bryony. Cheers, thank you. Well done, Bryony. If you said to me, should any jockey travel to a race alone, the answer is no. Rui Walsh once said to me, I think too much. It's the truest thing anyone's ever said to me. Can Q card become a horse in a million and give Paddy Brennan a second Cheltenham Gold Cup? The time for Q card came, I thought my best chance of the week. Obviously, there was a million pound bonus. Jumped off, and I thought, Jesus, like this ain't you. Do you know, I was expecting like to be really traveling and like plan A, B, C, D had gone out the window after two fences. Followed by Q card in the blue colors. Just left his hind legs trailing a touch there, Q card. After about two and a half miles, suddenly he just came into the bridle and I thought, there you are. I was like wondering where you've been, as if to say, like, you didn't feel that good today. And I turned down the hill, and then that was the moment that I can never fix. On the inside is Jack and Ab, Q Cardo, Fuelan's boy, and Don Cossack, and they go three up. Q Cardo's down! Q Cardo's down! feeling empty and sick. I was getting sick. I was puking and I wasn't even sick. Do you know, I was weird. There isn't a day goes by that I don't think of that fall. People say, at least you've won a gold cup. Well, it doesn't feel like that to me anymore. And that is genuine. I need to win another one. And then it might feel okay. Let's just get home now and get ready for tomorrow. Hopefully got a couple of nice rides. So you just got to keep looking forward. Where's the next winner? Sometimes you're in fashion and everyone wants you and sometimes you're just stale and you need to sort of win another Gold Cup or a Grand National. It's always so close and it could suddenly be just around the corner where your life's going to change again. You'd be mad if you said you weren't, you know, overwhelmed by it. Hello Peter, you're going on a long trip tomorrow. You know, next year am I going to have such a fantastic run? Well, who knows? Nobody knows that. Who could have told you this would have happened this year, you know? That sort of run through life and it happens so fast, um, it's just you're running constantly on an adrenaline wave and it's just, you know, it's a cool place to be. There's never a boring moment. My metaphor of life, it's a funny one that I've discovered. I've got quite a few. If you look at the top of the mountain, it's a long way up. So if you can just keep taking a step at a time and it's improving, it's going uphill, wherever you finish is where you finish. And well done, kids, you've done well. But if you're looking at the top and you don't get there, then you've failed. No one likes to feel like they've failed in life, so just keep moving forward a step at a time. I wanted a jacket in two years ago and the only person that knew that was my agent, Dave Roberts. It was the closest I've ever been to just walking away. Mentally, I wasn't in a good place. Who's next there, boys? You, Jack. Then just suddenly I got my head out of myself and just thought, what are you doing, you know? <laughs> it's on to the next chapter, them is my kids in it. Hopefully they can go and achieve something or Looking forward to the next challenge. It's Ollie's turn now. Ready, Ollie? I think you'll figure out who we think is a favour to be the jockey, lads. Come on, Ollie! Get it on! Go on! Don't get me wrong for one second. Nothing's going to beat what I'm doing now. When I retire, it's over. The dream is over. It's gone. And nothing in the world is going to replace it. Nothing.